Hi everyone, welcome back. The video that we have today is going to focus on validity. So right now we're talking about moral reasoning and philosophical arguments. And in one of our previous videos, we talked about the fact that moral reasoning is about offering and evaluating reasons that are meant to support moral conclusions. And when we present arguments, we need to have arguments that avoid bad reasoning and false premises. So when we talk about logic, remember that the logic of an argument is a matter of how its premises are related to its conclusion. So we're talking about this relationship between the different statements. Logically valid arguments are arguments where the truth of the premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. Logically valid arguments are arguments where the truth of the premises guarantee the truth of the conclusion. So if the premises are true, there's no way the conclusion could be false, given those premises. This gets weird when it comes to truth, like factually correct information, so just hang in with me on this. If you are trying to determine if an argument is valid, if it has the proper structure, the proper relationship between the premises and the conclusion, we can perform this three-part test of validity. By the way, this is from the Fundamentals of Ethics by Russ Schaefer Landau. It's at the beginning of the book. So the three-part test of validity. First part, identify the parts of the argument. So we saw in a previous video that there are ways that you can identify the different parts of the argument, that you can identify the conclusion, which is the main point that's being argued for, and that you can identify the premises, which are the reasons that are given for that conclusion. So identify the argument's parts, and then write the argument in standard argument form. So premise one, premise two, draw your line, and then put the conclusion underneath the line. Now, for the sake of this test, where we're trying to determine if the argument has the proper structure, so if it has the proper structure, if it is a valid argument, remember, that's about that relationship, about the structure of the arguments, we're going to, for the sake of this little test, assume all the premises are true. We're going to assume they're all factually correct, just for the sake of this test. We're going to ask ourselves, if all the premises are true, is there still any possible way the conclusion could be false? If it is the case that yes, the conclusion could still be false even if your premises are true, then that means that the argument is invalid because the truth of the the conclusion is not guaranteed by the truth of the premises. If there is a no answer to that question, if there's no way the conclusion could be false, if the premises are true, then you do have a valid argument because the truth of the conclusion is guaranteed by the truth of the premises. So, if we go over here to our practice argument, and this is one from the book, The Fundamentals of Ethics, we'll start with the heroin argument. So this argument says as its first premise that heroin is a drug. The second premise is selling heroin is illegal. And the conclusion is therefore heroin use is immoral. So doing our three part test of validity, let's assume for the sake of this test, that it is factually true that heroin is a drug. By the way, that is the case. It is factually true that at least in this jurisdiction, heroin is considered a drug. Okay, let's assume that selling heroin is illegal, that that's a factually true statement. And again, in this jurisdiction, that is a factually true statement. Selling heroin is illegal. Okay, if both of those statements are factually true, is there still any possible way the conclusion, therefore heroin use is immoral, 
could still be false. Yes, that could still be false. Why? There's no given connection between illegality and immorality. Remember that at the beginning of the class, we talked about what ethics are and what they're not. And we said that law is not ethics. There are times when you can do things legally that people would consider immoral. And there are times when things that um, are moral, things that you think are the right thing to do, are illegal. So we have to keep in mind that ethics are separate and distinct from the law. So if we don't have any additional premises that connect drugs to immorality or doing something illegal to immorality, if we don't have all of those premises added in, then this as it is, is an invalid argument. Okay, so let's go back to this idea that validity is concerned with the structure of the argument. Validity has nothing to do with the factual truth or falsity of the premises and the conclusion. What this means is valid arguments, even if they have the correct structure, they may still contain false premises and or a false conclusion. So just because the structure is correct, it doesn't mean the argument is a good argument because it could contain factually false information. So if we do our three-part test of validity on this next example, premise one, John Quincy Adams was either the eighth or the ninth president of the United States, abbreviated as POTUS. Premise two, John Quincy Adams was not the eighth president of the United States. Conclusion, therefore, John Quincy Adams was the ninth president of the United States. Now, if we conduct our three-part test of validity on this, we see that once we have our argument broken down like this, if those premises are true, with this information, there's no way that conclusion can be false. So this is a valid argument. But my history buffs will tell us that this argument is not sound because the premise number one is false. John Quincy Adams was in fact the sixth president of the United States, not the eighth or ninth president of the United States. So there's false information in this argument. And even though there's false information in this argument, the structure itself is fine. So this is a logically valid argument, but it's not sound. A sound argument is an argument that has factually true premises and it's logically valid. So if it's valid, remember it has the proper structure where the premises that are given guarantee the truth, the truth of the premises given guarantee the truth of the conclusion. But the sound arguments also have to contain true information in those premises. So what this means is, after you've identified your argument, after you've identified the parts of the argument, after you've determined whether or not the argument is valid, then we have to go on to the actual content of the argument and see if that information is factually correct, if it's true. How do we know that? We have to fact check. So we'll have a video coming up later about that part of critical thinking that has to do with fact checking, research, and sources. Okay, y'all, I know this one's a little longer than our little mini lectures usually are. We're getting up to past nine and a half minutes, but I did want to give you this lesson on validity and show you this three-part test that we can use to determine whether an argument is logically valid. I also wanted y'all to keep in mind that when we look at these arguments and we analyze them, first we need to determine if the structure is proper, so whether or not they're valid, 
Then, once we determine we do have a proper structure, we have to pay attention to the actual content of the argument. Okay, everyone, I hope this was helpful. Y'all have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.